Good day and welcome back to another week of Talking Technical and this is our final show for 2023. Well, we will kick off in January again. You'll probably see your first YouTube video on the 18th of January again. Me and Christelle is going to take a little bit of a break. We're going away for a few weeks, so um, it's time for us to relax a bit. But as you always know, I always take my computer along and... Um, because it's my passion and it's my hobby and I love it and I like it. So I'll probably check every day, maybe one, two, three times a day. But the rest of the day, I will just relax and enjoy nature and see whatever the world can show us. But let's kick off with Bitcoin. Bitcoin, well, we talked about it and I'm seeing an ugly, tiny tower top here. What worries me, it's always with any index, any instrument. Any, um, you can also say any share that you look at, if you see this prolonged rally to a certain level, eventually there, it, it comes to a point where the sellers come in. And it's quite simple. You know, in 2020, when COVID was there, the market just fell and fell and fell and nobody could understand. And then suddenly the market turned around and rallied. Why? Because all the sellers just dried up. And it's exactly, if you see an instrument coming from 25,000, running to 45, well, let's say 45,000 almost in six weeks, you get to a point where the buyers dries up. And the moment they're drying up, then the sellers come in and say, well, it's maybe time to lock in some profits. And this is what we see here. And for me, first of all, that was my first warning sign. And I mean, I, I read a lot of analysts that say, Bitcoin can go to $100,000. Yes, maybe it will get there, but not uh, this week. It will take, maybe take two weeks or three weeks or four weeks or maybe 10 years. We never know. Well, but the first warning sign was below 44,044. Sorry, not 44,000, 42,849. That was the low of that candle, 42,849. And it had this ugly sell off. I mean, that is a sell off of almost three thousand dollars that's almost 10 percent let's have a look here this is the trend line that still keeps bitcoin going higher now always people will say the moment it gets to this trend line you just come in and you buy bitcoin because this is the future i'm always very nervous about that because what you then do is you believe that a price can only go higher. And remember, Bitcoin has nothing behind it. It hasn't got gold. It hasn't got all fancy things like fundamentals. It is just a coin. Somebody minted, and that's what you buy. And you hope that that coin just getting more expensive. Yes, they've got all different ways of marketing it. And I also see that you can buy it now in smaller pieces, fragmented pieces. So, um, that still does not entice me to buy Bitcoin. Um, I would like to understand it. Sorry, I am maybe too stupid to do that. And on the other hand, I would like to see that there's a little bit of a backing behind it, like a gold or a silver or any metal um, so that I know. But for me, this big trend line is sitting at 40,418. Now, can you believe it? That was the level where Bitcoin was about 10 days ago. So when it breaks below 40,418, where can it go to? It can go to 39318. Three, three, There's some strong support at 38,532. But I think maybe a proper uh, pullback will either be that support line. I gave you that level just now. But I will look at this support line. Maybe if it can pull back to this. What happens here is that you will find a place where there was a lot of consolidation around here. And only be after that it started to move higher. So that level for me will be 34,957. Let's make it 35,000. Maybe a pull back to 35,000 can maybe be healthy. And remember, Bitcoin rallied with the S&P, rallied with the gold, rallied on its own. So maybe this is an early indication that some of those other indexes or even gold just rallied too far. Remember, gold also pulled back almost $60 from its top. It had a beautiful rally, but it pulled back. Let's have a look at Brent oil. Now, the reason why I'm showing you Brent oil, I mean, everybody is saying that 
oil can just go lower. Why? Because there's two things. First of all, they say inflation is now cooling down and um, that puts the oil price under pressure. And some other people say that we're heading into a recession. Yes, that's maybe true. But for me, look what I see here. I see the stochastic has been oversold. It's ticking higher. We saw oil fell from $84 to $74 in a matter of five sessions. And now I'm seeing higher lows. There's a low, higher low, higher low, higher low. And for me, let's draw this little line in there. The chart tells me if it breaks above this little line, and that level is sitting at $76.45. If it breaks above $76.45, we can easily see a V reversal here. Maybe I must just show you guys what a V reversal looks like. It's a sharp sell off. And then usually if the price starts to recover, you get a V reversal. Sometimes you do find that. But for me, if you do buy it above uh, 76.45, make use of a stop loss of 73.64. And where can it go to? It can maybe go to uh, 77.67, 79.16, 79.68, and then of course 80. But as we see here, the 50-day moving average is still a resistance and that keeps everybody happy. So maybe we'll see a relief bounce after this ugly waterfall formation. We see a V reversal and maybe you can benefit of it. And as you know, if Brent oil picks up and the rand is reasonably weak, we can maybe see even Sassel to pick up. But I mean, there's a little bit of a reversal here in oil. It has been hammered for a few weeks now. I mean, it's almost six weeks that it's just been hammered to pieces. Let's have a look at MTN. Now, remember, they had problems the other day. The share fell well below 100 Rand. Um, and what happened? And I showed it on the program, and I also showed it to our uh, uh, subscribers. Um, we actually called it when this little hammer here developed. There was a hammer, and um, I actually, when I analyzed it for someone, I said to, to him, can you maybe explain to me, is this hammer maybe a turnaround? And he said to me, Franz, why do you say that? I said, just have a look at this candle. There was a, there was a shooting star. And after the shooting star, there was a prolonged sell-off. And look what happened there. There was a beautiful inverse hammer here. After this inverse hammer, what happened? It went up. And what I like about the MTN, it was a low there. It came back almost 90 Rand back to test that low. And since then, in a few sessions, I mean about 15 sessions, it advanced from 90 Rand to almost 107. But what do I see here? I see this stochastic is showing some weakness. It's showing a negative divergence building up. And for me, that's always an early sign that momentum can turn around. We haven't got a, a reversal candle yet, but I think my first sign. And remember, a lot of viewers is some uh, good money is sitting on some good money here, almost a 15% uh, gain. Well, below 104.31, you can easily see that MTN turns around and it gives us a little bit of a pullback. And we, the first line to watch is this 50-day moving average is 102 rand, but I think it can easily come back to 100 rand and then maybe at all advance from there. But this is just one thing of shares. If it gets hammered for too long, it turns around. And if you look at this long term, look at that long term trend line. It took weeks to lift its head about it. But when it lifts its head, it goes up. Remember, it's exactly the same on the opposite. If a share just carry on, there's the same. You can see it. what happened there. Let's just go back. MTN had a beautiful rally from about 110 to 140, you do your trend line, the trend line is classic, there you are, and the moment it breaks this trend line, it comes back, and what, that was nothing else than a lampel formation, just too good, too soon, too quickly, and eventually it burns itself out, it's like an athlete, if you let your child run 100 meter every day and want him to be a champion at the age of 10, you'll probably be burnt out by the age of 13. So it's a, a prolonged thing, slow movement over a long time. Let's have a look at pick and pay. This is definitely one of the darks of the market. I mean, the company is really struggling. They, they appointed a the new CEO 
And if I look at this chart, I just see lower highs. And I see it's going down and down and down. Yes, there is a candle with a little bit of a shadow yet. And I will say, where will I get optimistic? Let's draw in that line. But I'll tell you now what I think what's going to happen here. And that's something fundamentally. Um, let's do that. You will see there's a beautiful falling wedge developing here. And I will say, if I look at this chart, many other companies in the past, when they run into trouble, what do they do? They appoint a new CEO that can turn around the business. After a few quarters or even months after that appointment, the guy is still negative about the company. And then you realize that they need cash. And then they come to the market and they offer a rights issue to clients. And then shareholders can buy in. And I've learned something over the years from Christelle. Christelle is a brilliant fundamental analyst. And she said she saw that before. The moment the company offers a rights issue, because it's a dilution of shares, very often, the share price first go down after the rights issue and only after that it, it picks up. So what she does is she say, um, instead of taking the rights issue, she waits for the share to consolidate and even make some lower lows. And then even if it gets and it lifts it, only then she adds up into the position. I'm not saying that it's going to happen to pick and pay, but this is a classic example of maybe we're going to see a rights issue. It can go lower, and only when it turns around, then maybe it's time to add into the position. I personally believe I cannot see pick and pay go under. I think that maybe some of the bigger companies eventually, when it's cheap enough, will get involved or, or buy a share in it or whatever the case may be. But for me, trend is still down. Yes, the first sign of strength will be about, above 2032. Your stop loss will be 23, 28 if you want. Uh, sorry, 21.56 is your stop loss if you, if you want to take a stop loss. But for me, at the moment, trend is down, lower highs, below the 50-day moving average. The stochastic is very, very weak. It doesn't show any oomph. So maybe wait for it before you just enter in it, and then you can maybe buy. But always, with a company that struggles financially, just be careful. Always stick to your stop loss. Let's have a look at Karoo. And it's not Karoo where I stay. This is the share Karoo. And um, I looked at the share and look at this massive spike in this share price. It went up from 443 all the way up to 640. And the beauty is it actually closed there. And the next day it fell back. To 5.99. I don't know if it was a fat finger. That I don't know. But this is definitely a, a shot right through to the top. I don't know what happened there. Um, but if I look at the chart, for me, it's quite interesting. There's the support line. And that support line is almost exactly at the same spot as the 50-day moving average. And that 50-day moving average sits at 460.54. If it breaks below 460.54, I will see that top shoot out candle, let's say that um, I will see that as almost just a play to the top, uh, maybe a fat finger. I will use this as my guideline. That's a rising wedge and the rising wedge can easily take the share if it breaks below that line. Let's just do that projection there. It can maybe take the share all the way down to that low and that low is sitting at 393.55. So for me, Karua, guys, not really a buy. Let's have a look at silver. Silver, silver, silver. Let's have a look at silver. There you are. Silver. Oh, yes, that looks, that's one. No, why, why that somebody asked me, France, can you please analyze silver for us? Wow, look at this. I didn't check this chart before, so thank you so much. There's the lamp oil formation. And then suddenly you saw this beautiful belt old line candle there right at the top. But when it entered up another day higher and it went to 25.91, what happened? It got knocked from 25.91 to 24.42 in one session. And since then it just dropped. And there you are, overboard stochastic, lamp oil formation, all the way to the down in a waterfall formation. It is oversold now. So for me, my 
guideline will be this. There you are. Will be my 50-day moving average because it is just below the 50-day moving average. So if you look at buying silver, you can maybe buy it above. There you are. I just want to get you the exact level. Is 23.09. Buy the 23.09. Make use of a stop loss of 22.78. And where can it go to? Let's give you the levels 23, 24, 23, 39, 23, 60, and even 23, 89. And let's make it 24 above that, that nice psychological level. And by the way, psychological levels are very important. You often see that the share just stop at the psychological level or from a psychological level gain some new traction. So I always keep in mind when it gets close to a psychological level, I'm always a little bit tentative to look at it. And the other day, maybe I told it before on the uh, program or shared it on the program before. If you've got a share, maybe you want to sell at 23.84 and you believe that the share can maybe go to 24. Put your order in the system at 23.99. Because often it happens that somebody buys the share and they want to buy the share and then the broker say or the computer say, listen, there's a, a thousand shares above 23.99. Do you want that? Then the guy says, yes, I want it. And then he buys yours and at least you are out and you've made your profit and you can walk away. Let's have a look at Harmony. I mean, Harmony was always a share struggling. But suddenly what's happening nowadays, Harmony is now one of the top stocks in, in the market. And what do they do? They actually, every time that you just see that the gold price just gives us a little bit of a move, then Harmony is up there. Look at the share price here. Very interesting, this. Um, for the last couple of days, there was all higher shadows. And it pointed out that there's some sellers around this market. And what happened in one day? It somehow went up 3% again. So for me, I must look at this, the low of that little candle there. I'll give you the level now. That low is sitting at 113, 110.77, 110.77. If it breaks below 110.77, I see that the share can maybe pull back. It can go back to, let's give you the levels, 108.51, 107.17, uh, 102.60. And I think it can maybe go back to 100. But what worries me a little bit on Harmony is that little gap there. I just want to see if it is a gap. 93.86 to 90, 80, oh, sorry, 86.32 to 86.50. Oh, yes, there's a gap. At 86.50, there's one gap. And what worries me is this other gap here. And that is between 75.07 and it will close at 74.17. So maybe I'm wrong. But for me, beautiful rally. But what I don't like about the share, it is there's your top. That was the resistance. I just want to draw it incorrectly because this show is actually about training or showing people some technical analysis and how to apply it. And if I look at it, there's the lamp pole formation. It broke it out already. And it gives us now a bounce. Now we must see if the share can maybe touch that previous high and that I was sitting at 120.90 or if it's going to turn around here and give us a lower low and from there it can maybe go down all the way to these gaps. But for me, my first target to the downside will be 100 Rand because remember, if you look at that, 100 Rand was a very strong uh, resistance line. It worked there almost for five, six days around that level before it rallied off to 120. And just look at this. From 65 Rand a share to 120 in a matter of two and a half months. That is going. So I'm just a little bit nervous, but Harmony is one of the stalwarts at the moment. You remember it's old mines, it's deep mines, difficult workforce. And while the gold price is going the Rand this week, everything is in their favor. But boy, oh boy, things can really quickly change. If the gold price comes under pressure or the Rand maybe just show a little bit of strength, or maybe something goes wrong at the mine. So just be careful there, but a wonderful share with a wonderful move to the upside. Well, thank you for watching the show. Thank you for all the emails and the thank yous that we do get. Thank you for the subscriber base that's growing. We cannot believe it. Thank you so much for doing that. And on the other hand, enjoy your Christmas, enjoy your new year, and please be careful. 
and if God willing, we'll be back on the 18th of January and enjoy the break. And thank you for watching the show once again. Visit our website www.francedeclair.com for more info. And as always, let's chat again.